This is Sports Matters with Jerry Collin. Jerry Collin. It's so retro. We cover all the biggest sports on the planet. MMA, boxing, snooker, football, darts. You name it and we cover it. Check out all the latest interviews with Jerry and the Stairs weekly on Sports Matters. Okay, so welcome to Sports Matters with me, Jerry Collin, and joined by Brentford player John Egan. He's, uh, I'm saying it for years, he's one of the biggest prospects in Ireland. Uh, what a home debut uh, just over the weekend. Two goals against Ipswich. John, I'd say you're still buzzing from the weekend, are you? Yeah, still buzzing, Jerry, but I mean, you know, it was, it was great to make my home debut, first of all, for Brentford, like, um, you know, against, against a good team in Ipswich, and... I suppose before the game you'd have taken any win, but to get the two goals and uh, the man of the match and to get the win was, you know, it was fantastic. Really, it couldn't have gone any better. And you know, I, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy with how it went, and just looking forward to the next game now. I think it's it's a serious there because you're known for your, your good goals and stuff. But like I'd say, you know, the home fans in general are buzzing with the prospect of what's to come this season because Brentford done extremely well last season. And like if Switch were, um, you know, they were they were going for the for the Premiership last year, so that's that's a serious result. And say Mick McCarthy was gutted, <laughs> seeing a fellow Irish <laughs> man do a job. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, uh, yeah, the boys there. When I was looking from the outside in on Brentford the last couple of years, they've had, they've had two strong seasons in the Championship, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and that was definitely a factor in me signing for Brentford. Um, and obviously, as you said there, uh, yeah, if such man is by Nick McCarthy, you know, they're a tough side, they're a well-established championship side. They came close to getting to the Premier League a couple of years ago, and, you know, they're, they're a tough team to play. So, yeah, we, it was good to, it was good to get the win, and obviously Mick McCarthy was their manager, and we all know in Ireland, you know, Mick McCarthy was their Irish manager, so we all kind of have respect for him. So, yeah, it's good to be coming up against the likes of these fellas, and, you know, obviously I have a lot of belief in my own ability, and, you know, I'm... A lot of people are probably surprised that I scored the two goals the other day, but you know, a couple of people close to me weren't really that surprised, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not either, to be honest, because as I said, I've been watching you for a couple of years. Go back to your Sunderland days, and I know what you can do. Uh, we, we have to go back to your, your early days. Tell us about Greenwood. I know you played for Greenwood, and, like, and that's where you kind of developed as a as a player. So tell us about your Greenwood days. Yeah, Greenwood was fantastic. Um, I mean, I think I joined Greenwood when I was about five or six or something, five, six or seven, something like that really young um, and there was a good core of us that kind of joined at the same time and at the time I think I joined the team who were the year above me so um, you know the likes of Johnny Holland who's playing for Munster Rugby now him and his brother Cormac and a lot of other fellas were, were kind of that go uh, managed by the Holland's dad Pat like so they, that was kind of the first green with team I, I started playing with and then when I got to the age of about 10 um, John McGreevy took over the team my own age and uh yeah, he um his son Owen, who I'm very good friends with, um also joined us uh, from Casement and that. So that's when, you know, we started to kind of get a really good side together at Greenwood. And obviously, you know, cut a long story short, uh, we got to the under when we got to under 16. My last year with Greenwood, we won won the national cup, which was huge. So yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. You know, Greenwood. I remember was the echo? The echo house. had it all over the echo. Remember that well? Yeah, it was all, it was all over the echo. And for me, like you know, I could have. I could have left Greenwood at a younger age and gone to maybe a, a better team in Cork or whatever, but you know I always loved I loved Greenwood. We had, we had, we had a great bunch of lads there, and I mean you know it was only a stone's throw from my house. So I'd get up and I'd walk straight over to Coffee's Field and play a game, and I enjoyed nothing better, you know. And um, and I think you know we had a, a really good bunch of lads there who've gone on to do well in that. You see Danny Carlan playing playing for Cork and that in the GA. He was he was a fantastic keeper, and you know he. he I could, could have been a fantastic keeper in soccer as well. And I think there were a few good players in that around soccer. And it was brilliant to, to win the National Cup with them boys. Definitely. And of course, you made that dream move then, I suppose. You always dreamt about playing in the Premier League and following good footsteps and all that. But you joined Sunderland Football Club and uh, you spent, it was three seasons there, I believe. Tell us what it was like. What was it like, first of all, training with, like, you know, some of the best players in the world. Like, were you ever starstruck? You know, was it one of them teams where? Nah, I mean, I mean, I went, I went over when I was young, like, and I, I spent a total of five years there. I had yeah. um, my first two years, I was in the youth team, and then I had three years kind of reserve slash first team, and I suppose about a year of that, I was out injured. But 
No, in terms of training with fellas and working on their different managers like Steve Bruce and the Canyon and that. And I suppose I didn't get to work too much with the Canyon and Pius, but um, Steve Bruce and Martin O'Neill would have been the two managers who I worked most under. Yeah. And um, yeah, they were they were fantastic with me. You know, it was it was great. Obviously, as a as a young kid, I remember I was about just turned 19, and I think I was called up to the squad for the Man United game away at Old Trafford. Like, and I was obviously a United fan growing up, so it was it was really good. And um, I remember walking down the tunnel before the game, and on the left, you Ferdinand, Rooney, Vidic, all these fellas. Like, and I remember walking out of that tunnel, like obviously after the two teams, because I was on the bench, and I just looked looked at a crowd and. Just seeing how packed Old Trafford was, and I remember when I used to go there as a kid, and I mean that was probably a moment. Even though I didn't even didn't get on the pitch, it would have been great to get on the pitch. But even though I didn't get on to get onto the pitch, you know that that was a great moment. I had my family back home tuning in just to see if I'd get on and that. And you know I, that that's when I kind of knew that I come come a long way, you know, and I'm kind of walking walking down, seeing these fellas like Ferdinand and Rooney that I was still young, but. No, in terms of playing against these fellas or training against these fellas, like that's what you aspire to. You know, you aspire to get to the Premier League, and you know, you aspire to do all these things. And I have a lot of belief in my ability, and you know, hopefully, I can keep impressing people. Um, and you know, just keep 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 playing well here and see what happens. Definitely. Now, remember that pre-season tour of South Korea. Um, I think it was the Peace Cup that you played in at that time. Yeah. I think I think you you actually came on for Wes Brown, was it? I think Wes got injured and you came on. Yeah, I came on for Wes in the. Uh, we um, played a team called Granigan and I think I played about 60 minutes in that so it, I think we won two so that was kind of that was my first kind of kind of run out with the first team I suppose in, in, in pre-season that, and I think I played played three or four times for the for the first team in pre-season that year um, against the likes of Derby and Leicester and um, teams like that so yeah that, that was a fantastic um, pre-season for myself I think I did really well and obviously off the back of that we had a lot of centre-halves at Sunderland at the time so I was kind of making squads and travelling to games without getting much game time. So myself and Martin O'Neill decided it would be it would be a good idea to to go out and loan and get some games. And you know Bradford were going really well at the time in the league two, and they were in the league cup. Obviously they got to the final of the league cup that year. So we decided that would be good to continue. You know go there, get some games, and obviously come, try come back to Sunderland and push on them. So obviously I went to Bradford. Um, you know I was playing really well, and you know I was absolutely loving it down there. And then, you know, when 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 something's going well, you know, they always say you can be brought brought back down very quickly. And yeah. I got a leg break at Bradford, and you know that was kind of hard to take at the time. And you know, obviously, with with it being a, a long term injury, I had to kind of you know go to one really and just try to get fit and you know worry about my leg first and foremost before worrying worrying about getting back on the pitch. You know. Of course, and I remember when it actually happened. It was good because you were having a great run at Bradford. There was there were singing the praises, you know, of, of John e- John Egan coming through, and like you were doing so well. Um, I was good, but like it's great to see that you made that recovery, and like you've gone on from strength to strength since. Of course, you joined Gillingham in 2014, and um, it's like you've never looked back since. You had a great couple of seasons with them. Um, there was two or three seasons with Gillingham where you uh, you actually became captain. Yeah, a lot of people probably thought, you know, Johnny Egan gone from Sunderland gone to Gillingham at the backward step, you know, but in in my mind it was a forward step. Um, I'm I just recovered from a broken leg, and I played 15 games at South End, you know, so. Yeah. Me going from going from a broken leg to South End was also a, f- a forward step, and obviously going from South End to Gillingham. Then you know, obviously at the back of my loan spell at South End, I got to move to Gillingham, so that was another forward step in my mind. You know, I knew I I knew in my mind that you know I I, I had the ability to go to Gillingham, you know, try get as many games as I could under my belt, and you know, try and move up the leagues, you know, if 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 I impress people and that so. Obviously, going to Gillingham was, was unbelievable for me. I, I mean, it really got my career on the road, like kind of back on track, I suppose, and yeah. played nearly 100 games in two seasons there, and obviously earned my move to Brentford out of it. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I was, I can't thank Gillingham enough. You know, it was, it was, it was a brilliant two years there, and you know, I, I built up a great report with the fans. I wore the captain's armband a lot, and yeah, I, I, I really love Gillingham, and you know, it, like we, we also had a chance of going up last season, but um, it wasn't to be. But yeah, I mean. So that was that was great for my career getting getting the move to Gillingham and getting getting the games under my belt. Of course, and I always say because like I've, I've known players in the past that have gone to England. You know, the likes of David Bevan went to Aston Villa, and I'd be always kind of saying to the lads like I think David went to um, he was with Portsmouth and then he went to Watford for a while. But he said to me, match practice is everything. Like just once you're playing games, 
every game helps no matter what club you're with, like, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, games is the be all and end all, like, you know. Um, and I really see the difference in myself now after two years of a load of games, you know, you, you improve so much game on game. And, um, you know, everything just, just about getting into the whole routine of playing playing 50 games a season, you know, getting the body getting the body ready for it. And it, it's a long old slog and you need to be resting and recovering right. And, I mean, there's nothing like playing a game, you know, you get a great buzz and excitement out of it. And especially winning games is the best feeling ever. So, yeah, I think um, obviously when you're young and that, it's good to be kind of playing reserves. But that's why that's why I was caught kind of always out and loan and that. And when when I was kind of at Sunderland, because, you know, it's, you really can't beat, you know, Saturday, three o'clock, playing for three points. And of course, you're at Brentford now, and I, like I've been looking at all the reports since the weekend, you know, and it's 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 unbelievable. It's well deserved. But uh, I, I was actually at work, um, and I finished work at four o'clock, but I always check the the, the, the score centre, and they see Egan pops up two goals. I was just shaking my head. I was like, first of all, what a time to plan the interview. But second of all, ah, oh, absolutely delighted. So uh, I've seen the goals, awesome goals, powerhouse, I must say. <laughs> Ah uh, yeah, it was it was great to get the two goals. Like, uh, but um, yeah, I mean, as you said there, like, uh, you know, I say a lot of people are kind of saying, "Geez, you can got two, Like, a lot of messages from Cork and a lot of messages from Kerry, and a lot of people kind of come out of the woodwork. You know, when you when you start doing well in that. So um, yeah, it, it was great, obviously, to get the two goals. But you know, I had I had my people with me in the crowd and that to celebrate and after the game just to. You know, they, they were all buzzing, so yeah, it was it was fantastic, really. And you know, it's, it's only the start of the season. You know, there's a long season ahead, so you know, obviously can't be getting carried away with one game. Like, so you know, I need to need to focus on the next time I play now, and you know, hopefully make sure make sure I do the business any time I'm called upon. You know, definitely. And like the championship is one of the best leagues in the world. It's so strong. Like you see all the big clubs trying to get up. Like Brentford came fairly close last year. Uh, it's going to be a big season for you, no doubt, and yourself. And um, I'd say you're definitely hoping to catch the eye of Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane no doubt this this uh this season. Ah uh, yeah, I mean, you know, things like that are kind of out of my control, you know, as as I've said in previous interviews, you know, I need to keep my head down at Brentford and you know, keep working hard at Brentford and show people what I can do and you know, things like that hopefully will follow but you know, first and foremost I need to make sure that I'm I'm getting in the team and playing well and you know, obviously if I show people what I can do then things like that happen but I can't be you know, thinking too much into into that. I just need to focus on training and playing well for Brent and see what happens. Well, if you do your own thing as you always do, John, you're definitely going to go there. Trust me on that. That's the plan, bud. That's the plan. <laughs> John, it's an absolute legend as always. I know they'll like, probably see you over the Christmas period if you get home, if you're left yeah. home for a week or so. And um, Tom all and the best. Jerry, right? I say we live a lot of games over Christmas, though. I say maybe <laughs> maybe yeah. get a weekend off or a couple of days off and we pop home or something. But, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Cool. Fingers crossed. There's no yeah. place like home, as you know, but you're out doing the business. There's no the place moment. like home, but there's no, there's no food like the mother's food. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell <laughs> me about it. John, listen, thanks yeah. a million again. It means a lot, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Appreciate it. Jerry, top man, bye.